prepare to be mesmerized and prepare to be mm, blown away. Oh, son. And guys, that right there is one of the reasons why you don't want to mess with Tanner Flowers. Because I'm crushed you, son. I'm crushed you. Hey, my local branch manager at my pest control business, he knows everything about crawl spaces. And he told me if you put something over the magic three to four inch window, <laughs> it's breaking state code. <laughs> and let me tell you something. If you got a problem with the way I conduct business and the way I handle things, be my guest like I'm always telling you. Go get rooked by one of them other companies that's out here rooking somebody right now as I'm recording this friggin' video trying to teach all you people about how to not get rooked. Be my guest. Call up some local normal company and get you a normal job. And once you get done with that job and you see what that piece of crap looks like, come back and look at this video right here and let me just shove all this fine quality perfection right up your friggin' butt. Enjoy that crap job you got, brother. Woo! This crawl space, just like all of our other projects that you've ever seen here at Tennessee Technicians, will be below 50%, and it will stay below 50% year-round, or by God, my name ain't Tanner Flowers. Woo! And it's awesome driving to this job site because you literally got to drive through a forest just in order to get here. Man, wait till I go up this driveway, I'll show you. Last time I tried to go up this a little too slow, and I had to stop and put it in four-wheel drive, so let me see if I can uh, get a little momentum here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, we're spinning a little bit. But wait until you see this view, guys. Man, it's going to blow you away. So my new buddy Art here, he and his wife, they just moved here recently all the way from way out in California. And I believe they said the place was called Paradise and it was where they actually had the worst wildfires ever last year or whenever it was. They lived like 10 minutes away from the heart of where those fires were just like burning up everything. And they packed up ship guys and they moved all the way from way out there on the west coast all the way over here on the east coast and look at this view that they got guys these are the legendary chilhawi mountains behind us also known as the cherokee national forest one of the best areas around guys for anyone that enjoys mountain biking right over here at the chilhawi trails is some of the best mountain biking in the entire area guys also home of the olympics way back in 1998 where they did all the white water rafting the okoi river it's literally i can almost throw a rock and hit it from right here where I'm standing and Mr. and Miss Widener picked a beautiful home right here in Benton and guys this house after moving into it they quickly realized that they were experiencing a moisture problem now some of the things that we had to address inside this home before we could even begin our encapsulation work was an inside perimeter French drain system all leading to a basin that is all sending water right out that discharge line right over here to a pop-up drain where all of that water that was getting inside that crawl space is no longer an issue inside the crawl space also this foundation had zero foundation vents and we had to cut two of them in for our humidistat fans so once i show those to you from inside the crawl space the one is discharging right here and we actually had so much dirt backfill on the other side of this home that we had to purchase one of those metal wells to bolt up on the side of the foundation here to prevent any of the dirt backfill from coming back atop our new vent area. So if you look way down right here in the bottom of this right here, right now there's a ton of air blowing up outside of that. That's because that's what the exhaust is coming out of from the crawl space now, guys. And this system that I'm getting ready to show you, it's not even been running 24 hours yet. Drew just walked out of this crawl space, he and Misty, yesterday afternoon. The system's been running now just shy of 24 hours. And whenever I was inside there with Art a few moments ago, the moisture levels in the crawl space have already dropped from 90% down to 66%, and they're continuing to drop. Within another 24 hours or so, guys, this crawl space, just like all of our other projects that you've ever seen here at Tennessee Technicians, will be below 50%, and it will stay below 50% year-round, or by God, my name ain't Tanner Flowers. Woo! 
On top of the two new foundation vents that we had to cut in for Art, we also went ahead and built him a brand new crawl space entry door. Now that thing seals up flush all the way around. Don't have to worry about any airflow passing in and out of it. Don't have to worry about any mice getting in and out of it. And guys, without further ado, let's go over here, open up this brand new latch, get inside here, and check this bad boy out. And just like on every single crawl space encapsulation project that you see me attaching my name to, all you gotta do is look overhead and right here, just like always, baby, you just flip that light switch and guys, you got lights throughout this entire crawl space encapsulation project. Let me kick these dirty shoes off and get inside here and take you guys on a full tour of this bad boy. Prepare to be mesmerized and prepare to be blown away. So before we go into further detail about all the beauty that you see behind me right here, let's talk a little bit more about this French drain inside this crawl space. On every single one of these inside perimeter French drain projects that you see us doing inside these crawl spaces, guys, we use a four inch perforated pipe with the filter sock around that. And then we use our thick six ounce drainage fabric to completely line the entire drain line of the project. And speaking of drain lines, just like on all the rest guys it goes all the way around the inside perimeter of this crawl space making its way completely around from corner to corner all the way back down over here to our basin point and right here at the basin you have connection points coming in right here as well as right here for the four inch line and all that water is sent down inside this basin area, which is housing our sump pump, which Drew already has sealed up tight, so I'm not going to mess with it. But as the water level inside here builds up, it will trip the float switch on the side of the pump and send all of that water up and outside the home where I was showing you a few moments ago so that any accumulated drainage water that was once entering this home is no longer a problem anywhere inside this entire crawl space. Let's carry on. And before we head on down this crawl space, guys, I want to make note of something. On all of the duct lines here, when I did this initial inspection a few weeks ago, every single duct line inside this crawl space was completely raining. All of this over here, this was a rain fest, guys. It was a thunderstorm. And I went ahead and went to the HVAC store. I bought Art a brand new drip pan right here. And if you'll notice, now guys, keep in mind, like I've already told you, this system has been running less than 24 hours. And look already, look on the bottom of these duck lines right here. I see barely a little bit right here left. That one is completely dry. And over here on the sides of this main unit, it is barely dripping over here on the corners. There's still some condensation occurring right here. That's why I'm glad we went ahead and got this drip pan and Drew plumbed that drip pan in over so that it goes over here and connects into the existing condensate line of the system. However, just note, in about another two days, none of this condensation that you see visible that's left over right now within the first 24 hours will be left visible at all and i would not be surprised at all if that complete puddle of water that you see under there right now is not only completely dry or maybe even down to the size of your fist by this time tomorrow went from having a house built on a slab out there in california to getting out here in tennessee with a crawl space foundation and you might not have to worry so much about the wildfires over here in East Tennessee, but you do gotta worry about moisture inside your crawl space. So for all of you new homeowners that are just moving to the East Tennessee area, if you too have purchased a home with a crawl space foundation and you too are quickly finding out you have an extreme moisture problem underneath your home, maybe your hardwood floors are bucking up all over the place, maybe doors have gotten real hard to open and close for you, speaking of, Art had one inside here that connected to the kitchen. When I did this inspection, that door would hardly even close. You had to yank the crap out of it almost with both hands. Just a few moments ago, while I was inside there talking to Mr. and Ms. Widener, I went over there to that same door, grabbed it with two fingers, pulled it to as easy as pie. Less than 24 hours, guys. Just wait till this system's been running around one week. And if this happens to be the first crawl space encapsulation project video that you have ever seen from us, what you are looking at, guys, is a 20 mil fiberglass reinforced poly. And we run that poly 
all the way along the entire floor system of the crawl space up around all the piers and up every single wall all the way to the top where we straight edge it off and where all you ignorant bug people can still see your termite mud tube going up over here that you think that you can't see if you have a magical three to four inch termite window that my local branch manager told me about. Hey, my local branch manager at my pest control business, he knows everything about crawl spaces. And he told me if you put something over the magic three to four inch window, <laughs> it's breaking state code. <laughs> Here's everyone a better shot of the piers inside this crawl space. And as you get over here making your way to the other side of this foundation wall, we had an additional crawl space section over there that we did have to get inside there and do our inside perimeter French drain. And whenever we do those areas like that, we connect those to the main inside perimeter drain by core drilling at both points right there so that the water flow can connect at those sections. Oh, 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 guys. Real quick, I want to show you something. If you look overhead, notice these aren't normal, uh, just normal floor joists. These are the I-beams. And one of the things that I like doing whenever a customer has I-beam floor joists is a fun little workout where you just reach overhead right here. Most people couldn't do it if they wanted to. I'm not even going to use my feet here. Check this out. Woo! Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, son. And guys, that right there is one of the reasons why you don't want to mess with tanner flowers because i'll crush you son i'll crush you to me it's always a crazy thing whenever you're dealing with a home this high up on a hill and you go inside the crawl space and you still see standing water most people wouldn't believe that that's even possible but that wall right there behind me when i did that initial inspection they had standing water all the way down it from one end to the other it hadn't rained here in several days before I did that inspection. And guys, at the time of doing it, you could still see tons of wetness in the bottom of the foundation, which I'm sure that you guys were able to see whenever I showed you the before picks. Wait, have I not inserted any before picks on this job yet? Crap! Guys, take a look at what this thing right here looked like before we got started. Sorry about that guys, I always like to put the before pictures in the video before I even show you guys what the finished project even looks like. But here we go on with the inspection photos. Look at all that condensation, look at all that that was built up on top of the ground. And you know, whenever I went to crawl inside this crawl space, with it being way up on top of this hill like you've seen, I didn't expect to see any standing water issues. But look at that right there. Look at the remnants of where that water has been all the way down through there. And then also, as I'm making my way around the crawl space, be looking not only at the water that is on top of the poly, but look at those hollow blocks. Look at how damp they are. And one of the reasons for that is because of how high the actual dirt backfill is on the outside of the foundation over there along that actual side of the house. Now, as we make our way throughout the crawl space here, you'll keep seeing remnants of the water. And after seeing all of that, I knew that we needed to address that issue before we did any of the encapsulation work itself. And then we got back over here around all these soaking wet ducks. I'm about to step out of the crawl space now and get back with the finished video. <laughs> You know it. You know it. Every time. Would you would you expect anything less? Do you think you wasn't going to see perfect when I opened that door? You knew you was going to see perfect, baby. You know what to expect on a Tanner Flowers project. And guys, I got some more crazy news for you regarding this project right here. I got a message, I don't know, maybe like two weeks ago from a girl. Now, this girl's like, Tanner, if you need any help on any of your projects, please let me know. I'd love to start working on these projects. And I'm sitting there in my head, I'm like reading this message and I'm going, what the crap is a girl messaging me for wanting to come work on one of our projects? Guys, it might look like a thing of beauty right now, but in case you don't know, this is some of the hardest physical labor you could ever even think about doing, guys. How many people you think is raising their hand volunteering to go work in a crawl space in the morning? I promise you, not too many. So I thought about it for about two days and I thought, you know what? I'm going to call old girl up. So actually I messaged old girl up. Her name's Misty. So I'm like, Misty, if you want to work, come on over here to this job site. We're doing an inside perimeter French drain and get started. Meet Drew there in the morning. So guys, she's been working with Drew for about the past two weeks. 
And every day it seems like I've been getting a different message of Drew bragging on her. He says that this girl has got more energy than Mike Rickard. And let me just go ahead and tell everybody watching, all the years of me owning Tennessee Technician since I started it in November 2005. I ain't seen nobody have more energy than Mike Rickard. So, Misty, congratulations. You got Drew Burt convinced that you got Mike beat. So, Mike, whenever you see this, I'm sorry, buddy, but the girl's taking your trophy. <laughs> and right here in front of me now is the humidistat fan that is on this side of the foundation wall, whereas on the outside is where we have that super deep vent. And when we install these humidistat fans, guys, look how we seal around every little nook and cranny. Whenever these things kick on, guys, we want this vacuum to pull right here through these vents. All you people that are out here installing these right here for people, and you're just bolting these things to the foundation walls and not doing anything around them, guys, you have all those air gaps. These things are doing nothing but sitting there churning air. So every single one of you that are out there installing these things improperly, you're ripping your customers off, and you are to be ashamed of yourself and we always set all of those humidistat knobs right around 40 percent that usually always achieves the results that we're out to achieve here at tennessee technicians and get our crawl spaces below 50 percent year round and keep them there just like i'm always telling you about i receive calls daily locally from out of state from all across the nation guys and i'm always told that i'm the only contractor that they have called that charges a consultation fee just to come out and give you a price on a project. Well, that ought to be telling all of you watching a little something right there. And if you don't want to pay that $250 consultation fee, that goes 100% towards your total project cost. Be my guest, call up some local normal company and get you a normal job. And once you get done with that job and you see what that piece of crap looks like, come back and look at this video right here and let me just shove all this fine quality perfection right up your friggin' butt. Enjoy that crap job you got, brother. Woo! Got a mighty Joe Friday. I can duck walk, baby. Let's get over here and take a look at this huge monster Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier System. And I'm going to show all of you watching not only a few tips about it, but also how to change your filter inside your Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier. Just like one of our out-of-state customers was asking me about two days ago, I couldn't find a video anywhere on my YouTube channel with me servicing this unit. So I'm going to show that to all of you right now. Since 2008... The only dehumidifier systems we have ever installed inside crawl spaces are Santa Fe. And we only install this unit that you see right here before you, the Santa Fe Advance, and the smaller unit we sometimes install called the Santa Fe Compact. Now, a couple things to take note of with your dehumidifier system. On the front of it right here, you're going to see a switch that says Fan On and Fan Auto. You want to make sure that that switch is always set to auto. Now, you look right here where we've got this dial. It's pointed correctly right now to about 7 o'clock. If this was 6 o'clock right here, notice we always keep these dials set right around 7 o'clock. We could turn this dial all the way up here to own. It is not necessary and it never is. And I got a lot of manufacturers say, well, we only tell people to keep ours right down here around six. Well, do whatever you friggin' want to. Get the results that all them people's telling you about that they ain't getting. And if you want the real results that we've been putting out here for more years than I can count, then there ain't but one place you're going to get it. Just like there ain't been but one place to get it all these years before it. And guys, you're going to have to call me up at 423-503-0512. You already know how we do. And let me tell you something. If you got a problem with the way I conduct business and the way I handle things, be my guest like I'm always telling you. Go get rooked by one of them other companies that's out here rooking somebody right now as I'm recording this friggin' video trying to teach all you people about how to not get rooked. Be my guest. It's your money. It's your checking account. It's your saving account. If you don't care, I sure don't care. Look at this brand new sea turtle that Dino Cook has got started on my leg, guys. All the way from Atlanta. Getting the old woodpecker covered up, guys. Blending in nicely with all the sharks. God, that looks good. And if you get right over here to the left side of the Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier System, right here is the main drain line of the unit. You can see water dispensing out of it right now. That water dispenses down inside this condensate pump, where just like in that big sump pump basin over there, the water will continue 
filling up this basin until it trips a float switch where that water then is sent up this discharge line and over into a P-trap where it is permanently sent outside of this crawl space and is no longer benefiting the high humidity numbers that were wreaking havoc inside this crawl space before Art ever found out about my phone number. Now every six months on these units right here, you need to change the filter inside it. How do you change the filter? Well look guys, on the side of this unit right here, just around the front corner, this is a magnetic strip. You just pull this magnetic strip off. No tools are required whatsoever. Slide the existing filter out and be sure whenever you put it back in, you got the arrows pointing in the proper direction and then you just simply put your magnetic strip back up in place. I'll have to do that two-handed here in just a second to get it back perfect, bear with me. And once you've gotten your magnetic strip back in place, guys, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what we do whenever we service these units every six months, we come into this drain line right here and we take one of those wire brushes that you kind of like clean baby bottles and stuff with and we'll put some bleach inside this right here and run a cycle of bleach through this line to help kill off any algaes that may have become built up inside the drain line just like happens sometimes in other HVAC condensate lines. And we'll also take that brush and clean this line out right here. You can also undo this one bolt right here and then clean that discharge point out as well and then connect the bolt and tighten it back up. So guys, other than changing the filter in the unit every six months and cleaning out the drain line right there of the discharge point, that's all the service that is involved on the Santa Fe dehumidifier systems on both the advanced unit and the compact unit as well. All of the lighting that you see overhead here on this project is the same LED lighting that we install on all of our crawl space encapsulation projects and it is always installed all wiring and lighting by none other than my father-in-law William Austin who also does all of our outlets as well for our humidistat fans and the outlets for our dehumidifier systems and the outlet for our sump pump. So big thanks to Willie. I appreciate you as always, and thank you for doing a tremendous job just like you guys always do. I appreciate it. Here is our second and final humidistat fan on this project. And once we turn this corner right here to our left, we're gonna be making our way back up to the crawl space entry of the home. And as we get up here closer to these duck lines, remember before it looked like I'd sprayed them all with a water hose. Look how much drier they are right now. But like I told you on the other side there, I do see a small bit of wetness. Actually, actually no, I don't see any wetness at all right here. So think about that guys. Look at that, all the way down that line right there, there is not a single droplet of water. Look here, under this right here, no water, no water guys. This was all soaking wet, I'm telling you. So all you people that are having all your duck lines sweating in your crawl spaces right now, and I'm telling you for everybody watching, it's uh, July the 16th or 17th, 2020. If you live anywhere remotely close to me here in Cleveland, Tennessee or Chattanooga, Tennessee, guys, you can rest assured if your crawl space ain't been done by us here at Tennessee Technicians and you get inside it right now, don't believe me, go crawl under there and look with your own two eyes, you're going to see water droplets along every single piece of ductwork in your crawl space and all of that water that's dripping off of those duck lines, guys, and all of that water that's coming up from that ground, and all of that water, or excuse me, all of that condensation that's occurring at every single crack, vent, crevice, opening of any kind of your foundation, all of that moisture is left to go nowhere but to be absorbed up inside your floor system of your home. That's what causes all the problems. That's how come by the time most of you even realize there's a problem that even exists, it's usually a major problem that's gotta be addressed. Call me guys before that happens to you. Don't become another victim and don't become another victim of some piece of shit company that's out here doing people the way they should never have been doing people and the way they know better than to be doing people. So guys, if you want your job done right, if you want someone that's gonna be proud to attach their name to your project, they ain't but one place to get it. They ain't been but one place that you can get it and they ain't but one place that you're gonna be able to get it in the future. And that's right here at Tennessee Technicians. You already know, but in case you don't, one more time, 423 503 you already know how we do and we're going to keep doing it. 
If you got any wildlife problems, contact me right now. We get all them nuisance animals out of your house. You got any stumps you need ground, visit us online at clevelandtnstumpgrinding.com. Got any custom ponds and waterfalls you've been wanting to put in your front yard, backyard, side yard, whatever kind of yard you want to put it in, hit me up at pondartist.com. And guys, if you're in the market for a rental property, hit me up. I'm selling a couple of my rentals. We got a new construction for sale right now next to Home Depot. I got another flip house for sale on the south end of town. I, I, I'm house rich, guys. If you want a house... I, if you're in the market, contact me. Guys, I'm out. I got to get on down the road. We'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. Talk to you again soon.